on WWE programming starting from NXT, SmackDown, and summing up with this week's Raw, there's been no shortage of news heading into Money in the Bank. This is Wrestling Hub and we're taking a look at what WWE told us through programming. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Eric and Ivar would return this week. SmackDown is from behind! The Viking Raiders going after Shanky in the New Day! And Eric and Ivar! When the Viking Raiders debuted in WWE, they were known by their original name, War Machine. Since then, their names have changed quite a few times. For a horrible week, they were known as the Viking Experience. Despite having a more suitable name, the company hasn't appeared to know anything about how to book them. For the most part, they were booked as both faces and heels, and seemed to be intent on destroying everyone. Ivar was the one that WWE management seemed to favor for the giant speed and athletic ability despite his size. But during the pandemic in 2020, Ivar suffered an injury while hitting a suicide dive, as the Raiders seemed to lose favor backstage. Ivar went away to recover, leaving Air to flounder and wrestle in the ill-fated Raw Underground. Even after Ivar came back, they were put in random storylines or were just messing around week after week and losing nearly every match. Then they went to NXT and had a program with some up-and-coming talent. It appears to have done them well and WWE took the opportunity to reset them. They made their way back to the ring on SmackDown assaulting the New Day, wearing black makeup. Now they seem to be booked as monsters. During the segment, Shanky also appeared to turn on Jinder Mahal finally. So the New Day might be feuding with the Viking Raiders while Jinder and Shanky turn their attention to one another. And you never... So what you're saying is, never give up. The Street Profits are heavily favored in WWE. John Cena appeared this week on Raw, and anyone that he was talking to was obviously favored, and it seemed the company already had a plan about how to use them. When it came to what they wanted from him, it seemed the Street Profits were the team that was getting the rub. Prior to Montez Ford's match against Jey Uso, Cena gave him a pep talk about never giving up. This seemed to ignite Ford, and this carried through his match. The Usos hold the Raw and SmackDown titles, and while they've just started their reign as undisputed champs, they will be losing it sooner than later. Later. Other than the Profits, there are very few current tag teams in WWE who are at the level of the Usos. For a while, the Profits have been just another team who, while winning some, have mostly been losing. They have not gotten enough wins to justify their position at the top of the division. Now though, with Randy Orton injured and possibly out for the year, the company needs a team to fill the void left by RK Bro. The Profits are the most natural team to take up that position, and on Raw this week, Ford took on Jey Uso, and not only did he put on an incredible performance, but the words from Cena's pep talk appeared to take effect as he beat Jay. It might be a matter of time before the Profits win the tag titles. The question you should be asking is, Melo, how'd you make that look so easy? Exactly. And the answer is, when I shoot, I don't miss. <laughs> of stars that potentially a favor backstage, Carmelo Hayes has stood out. While he's not the main event, he's been just one step away and the company is not jumping the gun on him. Having held the North American title, it's clear they think he's worthy of holding onto a belt. Hayes took on Tony D'Angelo for the title with Escobar, Fantasma, and more all ringside helping D'Angelo. Then Escobar, who was being forced to support D'Angelo, turned on him and didn't give him the brass knuckles like he was supposed to. Instead, he looked at him and then gave the weapon to Carmelo, who used it to knock Tony out and win. While D'Angelo's associates were unwittingly keeping the referee distracted. Thus, he came out of the no-win situation still champion. Now, this is simply the first step and there's a chance that there won't be an end to this push. While he will eventually lose the North American title, Hayes could be a big star in the future for WWE. Whether that happens in the next three or four years or not remains to be seen, but with the right push, he could be a face to remember. Setting up Ricochet for a massive powerbomb. Stacks up Ricochet. The reign of Gunther continues. 
Gunter is one of the latest arrivals on the WWE main roster, but he has been impressing in a big way ever since he's done so. When he was on NXT UK, he was the champion for years, but since then the company has changed and they don't really recognize the title reigns in NXT UK when promoting a star on the main roster, and they are treated as whole new arrivals. Fans thought that Gunter was headed for the same fate as everyone else on the main roster when they come up from NXT, obscurity after an initial appearance. But that has not been the case. Maybe the star's height has worked in his favor, but the company officials appear to love him. Gunter himself has gone through an epic change over the last few months, losing an immense amount of weight and appearing shredded. After Ricochet's forgettable reign with the Intercontinental Championship, where he seemed to be losing to everyone he faced, Gunter has breathed fresh air into the title picture. The fact remains that he has been booked strongly throughout, and has not even needed interference from his lackey to pick up wins. The dominance displayed during his matches is impressive and a potential sign of things to come. Already there are rumors Gunter is in for a long reign as champion. If this is true, there's something fans have to look forward to. <laughs> it's good to see you, man. You look great. Incredible speech. Oh, you're the best. You're the best. Possibly the most significant thing coming out of the night was what John Cena had to say on Raw about his future. With the company celebrating 20 years of Cena this month and on Raw, WrestleVotes reported that, aside from the obvious business boost, I'm told the return of John Cena is as exciting for the locker room as it is for the fans. Cena is viewed as the ultimate leader, with his positive presence felt throughout the company when he's around. So I need, I need to say this now. It ain't just gonna be one, it ain't just gonna be one, don't worry about it. During his short appearance, Cena appeared to interact with anyone and everyone. However, when he made his way out, he had some things he wanted to address. First, he thanked fans, showing his gratitude. He also told them they would get to see him in the ring again, although he was not sure when. His update was positive, saying he would not just have one more match, but several, ensuring fans would get to see him compete multiple times in the coming year. Despite turning 45, Cena looks fit as ever. Later in the night, Cena hinted he might be appearing soon. In the men's Money in the Bank match, a position is still open, after Riddle became the sixth member by winning the Battle Royal. While it's not clear, it could easily be that Cena takes up that spot. During his promo with Rollins backstage, Seth mocked him for failing to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase one of the times he had it. Oh, well that's a sore subject for you, huh? Because when you, you tried to cash in your Money in the Bank contract, you failed miserably. With that being the case, he might become the seventh member of the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. And these were things WWE told us on programming. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.